Hey everyone, it's Randy Coppola, U.S. Launch Report and Veteran Space Report. And we are in, coming to you live from Cape Canaveral where everything happens. Now, I was telling Mike, I want to just mention this really quick, what it's like to be like down in Cape Canaveral. You can go out to the bars, restaurants, you'll see guys working for SpaceX, all these people, all these former astronauts. It's really an interesting place to be. So if you get a chance to come out to Cape Canaveral, it's only getting better. So I hope you get a chance. The formation of the bubbles, this is a sort of a normal undisturbed ionosphere. And then again, from disturbances from below and above, you get one of these low density bubbles that percolate up. Now this launch is an interesting payload. It's a uh, Air Force payload with 24 satellites on board. Two real notable ones that you might be interested in. One of them is carrying an atomic clock into space. It was built by JPL, and what it's supposed to do is give precise navigational timing for future launches. Very interesting stuff. Another thing I wanted to mention to you is another one of the satellites is carrying a payload with like an eco-friendly propellant. And what's good about that is in the future, you know, current uh, propellants are you know, caustic, not safe for the environment and very dangerous in manned spacecraft. This test is going to be the leading the way as we find safer and more efficient ways to carry people up into space. All this is happening now, which makes it that exciting. But anyways, we all know that the Falcon Heavy, most powerful rocket in operation in the, in the world at the time, with its five million pounds of thrust at sea level, it's 18 747 motors going full thrust at uh, launch. It's quite the quite the launch to see. Yeah. And that's Tommy Hawkins. Uh, Tommy Hawkins invented this propellant yeah. about 15 years ago at a, uh, the FRL Edwards Research Laboratory. He has since retired, but I would like to uh, uh, thank him for the work he's done here. Some Mars South Pole missions where you could put a, uh, a lander down there and do some hops in the spring and look at geysers coming out. What's nice about that is during the winter, you could let the fuel go into glass transition, then you could save that additional power for science and payloads throughout. So. But anyways, thank you so much for watching this, this video, and we really appreciate your donations. It really helps us keep doing what we're doing and bringing you this coverage. And if you have any questions, shoot them in the comments, and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. But from Veteran Space Report and U.S. Launch Report, this is Randy Coppola. Thank you for watching. T minus 15 seconds. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Currently, next event coming up in about two minutes, we'll hear call out of chilling of the MVACD engine. That allows liquid oxygen to the top of the turbo pump to get the second stage engine ready to chill for ignition in just a couple of minutes.
We're two minutes into flight. We've begun to decrease thrust on the side boosters to minimize acceleration and loads on the Falcon Heavy structure. We've turned off one engine on each of the side boosters to decrease that load. Now our next major event coming up here in about 10 seconds, shutdown and separation of the side boosters. The view should be the side booster cameras on two sides and the center core in the middle. Booster shutdown. Booster separation confirmed. Cheering in the background, it's going on midnight, but a lot of people here at SpaceX, side boosters have separated, they're getting ready for their burn back to Cape Canaveral, you can see on the left and right views, the side boosters have ignited, the center core continues under full power, everything looking good on the Falcon Heavy. Next event coming up in about 15 seconds will be shutdown of the center core, followed by stage separation and ignition of the second stage engine. Good views of the two side boosters under the thrust of three engines each, slowing down their velocity and coming back towards Cape Canaveral. We have shut down on the center core. Stage separation confirmed. We have successful separation and ignition. We're coming up on shutdown of the two side boosters. In just a few minutes, the side boosters will execute an entry burn followed by a landing burn. And the center core will do the com will complete the same burns just a few minutes later. Both burns are used to slow the stage's speed down rapidly before landing. At the time of separation, the side boosters were traveling slow enough to turn around and make their way back to land at our side-by-side -side landing pads. The center core is going too fast to efficiently return to the Cape, so we're using our autonomous drone ship, of course I still love you, as we mentioned earlier. As a reminder, our drone ship is positioned twice as far offshore than normal, so we may not get visuals of landing tonight. Also coming up in a few minutes will be the call-out for second engine cutoff. So coming up in about a minute here, we're going to look for that side, burst, side booster re-entry burn to begin. Shortly after that, that should end about 20 seconds later. You can see both of those boosters on the infrared camera on the left side of your screen. Again, about 30 seconds until we expect those side boosters entry burn to begin. So keep an eye on the left side of your screen. In about 10 seconds, we should see those side boosters reignite for their entry burn. Side booster entry burn startup. And we have confirmation that the entry burn has begun. And in about 15 seconds from now, we expect that to end. Oh, wow. You hear the crowd here behind me. And that entry burn has...